Hello guys, it's Julia here, and in this video we will be setting up an Active Directory domain. Yes, this is what most businesses and other- I do know some places use different things like- Like what? Which, You're cutting out very badly. I know, I can't do anything about it, but like, I've seen businesses and schools, they- some use a service called Novell. Have- my- my- mine used to use that many years ago. That's Back in like bad. elementary, then they swapped over to Active Directory. My school uses Novell. Really? Yep. But hold on, so when you log in, you have to like type in. Log on to Novell Network, or sometimes it shows like OES or something. Oh wow, that's interesting. I've, My school uses I have not seen no I have not seen Novell in forever. Mine's Active Directory too. Wait, what's Novell? It's a, a service for businesses. Ah, uh, okay. All right, well, let's get started. So, you've got we have our server 2019 with DHCP, and we have a Windows 10 Enterprise client. So, what we're going to do is go to Server Manager on Windows Server. From there, we're going to add roles and features. Next, next, next. And here is where we're going to select Active Directory Domain Service. Add the necessary features. And we're going to go ahead and add DNS, as it's going to add it regardless. So we're going to do next. I don't believe we need anything from here. But it's always good to double check. Yeah, I don't believe so. It would have added everything that was Alright, next. Oh yes, the option for synchronizing with Azure Active Directory. Not something we're gonna do. Next. DNS server, blah blah blah. Next. And we're gonna restart automatically if need to. And install. So you wanna talk a little bit about Active Directory while this installs? Um, it's basically, in my opinion, it's a central event type thing where all your users and your other stuff are makes it really easy and and you get a lot of extras like the ability to control uh, the way the computers are set up, policies and all that. And we'll do policy in another video. And uh, why is Active Directory used? It's a, lo a lot of it's centralized management. Centralized management, okay. All right, so now we need to promote this to a domain controller. Here's where we're going to create our domain. So we're going to create a new forest. What do we want to name it? Put any name you feel like. YouTube. You spelled it wrong. I know. There. If I can learn to spell. Ooh. Where? DNS name. Oh. We'll just call it YouTube.local. Since this is going to be a series we're going to be doing. So YouTube.local will be our FQDN, which is which stands for Fully Qualified Domain Name. Alright. So here we're going to just have to leave everything default. It's 2016 right now. And we need to set a DSRM or Domain Services Restore Mode password. Which is used for what? So... There can be a time where your domain Fs up somewhere and you'll have to use that and it will not authenticate with the domain. It will not authenticate the domain credentials. So oh. this is like a type of offline local password that you'll need to use. Okay. So here there's a DNS thing, but if we click show more, let's see, it says somewhere if you are integrated DNS infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, no action is required. So we're just going to skip this. This what? will be the name that you will enter to computers to connect them. And as you'll see when it loads, of course, we're just going to enter YouTube, which will be fine for the video. I don't see any issue with it, unless you want to do something else. That's fine. Okay. So, 
these are these folders i've been told you really should put them somewhere else okay yeah we'll not worry about that you're you should put them in on different drive in case that fails you'll be able to somehow for it in my opinion i don't even though i probably should so i'm just going to click on next this is basically the selections that we've done yep so next it's going to run a prerequisites prerequisites check can't speak today for what reason This is going to set up Active Directory and DNS. Correct. Blah, blah, blah. Something DNS. Everything looks good. Install. So we are now setting up the Active Directory here. Yep, this is now promoting it to a domain control. Which this is the first time I've ever done this. So, I've done. I have an Active Directory in my network. I'm I just going to say the automation that you can do with group policy is so nice. Well, yeah. All right, and it's installed, so it's going to go ahead and reboot the server. All right. So it, what we're going to do is when this boots back up, we're going to log on to the server. And we're also going to join a client to the server. But we first need to make some changes in DHCP. Correct. Because if you remember what I said, Active Directory installs DNS. And the way you have to have the clients connect to the server over DNS. So we need to make a change in DHCP. So as soon as our server boots up, you will see the login is a little different. And we will also show in another video the things you can do with Active Directory. Most of it is group policy. Yes, group policy is a big thing. But you could integrate multiple things, sign on systems where uh, basically it's connected with Active Directory. Credentials will always be the same. So, like you say, you change it and it changes for all the SSO stuff. See, this reminds me, I'm pretty sure my school had an Active Directory, my old school I went to, because, you know, the computers would be like restricted. Like, you can't right click on the taskbar and mm -hmm. you can't open control panel. Yep, that would be Active Directory. Definitely With, Active Directory. That would be Active Directory of group policy restrictions. Correct. They use Active Directory to apply the group policy settings to particular users or groups. Yeah, there's a different set of policies. You could do that for either the user groups or... They probably the did different. it for groups. They probably have a student's group and a teacher's group yes. and an admin's group. Yeah, they, there would there should be uh, students, staff, staff or faculty, um, administrators or IT administrators. IT IT would have admin. Everyone shouldn't. Pretty sure at one point they put me in the teachers group because teachers had a little more rights, but not as much because I was able to like change the background and right click and open control panel at one point. It's possible the policies didn't get applied that time, or there was an error somewhere. It actually did it for a while because there was a special piece of software I needed for something. Yeah, that sounds like they put you in the wrong group and no one realized it. Yeah, so they changed you, my group. As you can see, this is taking its time. Yes, it is. And now this is really starting to make sense because now I see why schools... And, and businesses use Active Directory. So, when we log in, we're gonna see now it's got our domain name, then administrator. Password is still the same. And now we're logging on as our domain admin. The first thing we need to do is change our DHCP settings. And as you can see, our server now has a fully qualified domain name. So if we come over here, what's going on? Oh, we have to authorize it. Authorize.
be free. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to turn the mic back on. That's why I wasn't talking. Um, <laughs> technical difficulties. Well, they, oh. they still heard what I said, right? They heard what you said, but they didn't hear what I was saying. <laughs> um, okay, so, now that we have this set up, so, I think we don't have internet. That's because, what I was saying. I said we don't have internet because we didn't authenticate it. Well, no, not that. Oh, that's broken. Did our server just break? No, that's happened recently on every server. I don't know. So if we come over here and look at our network config, I think I'm pretty sure I know why. Our internet is not working. Why? Because it's changed the DNS to itself. So yeah. now we need to set up, if it didn't already do that, DNS. Normally it does set this up automatically. Yeah, it did. Alright. So, we should be able to... Yes, we can. How did we get internet? We do, we just have internet. Although, I like, instead of it looping back to itself, I like to do the IP address of the server. Oh. Yes, because that 127 IP was itself. It's just a loopback address. Alright, guys, we are back. Katie, don't scream. We have to hurry this up. I have to eat. Okay, so now that we've got our DNS figured out, we got to change our DNS over here. So what we're going to do is remove all of these and set it to the server, which is 10.10.0.100. It'll validate that. We can apply that. So now we can connect the client. If you head over to Windows 10, all right, we can renew its IP address by doing release, renew, which gives it a new IP or possibly the same one. It's going to give the same one, but it's going to update our DNS. Oh yeah, it fixes our now, DNS. If we go to control system, we're going to change our settings here. We're going to click on rename. And let's say win-10.0.100. And then we're going to click on domain. Now here is where we're going to enter our YouTube name. Click OK. And if done correctly, it should prompt us, and it is. It's gonna prompt us for authentication. So right now, I'm gonna log on using administrator. We'll see, welcome to the domain. So now it's gonna reboot and we'll put on right. our domain. We are rebooting, sorry about that. I had background noise. Which is why I hardly record videos anymore. So... Alright. So, what are we doing now? It's rebooting to fully initiate a connection domain. I'm guessing the login's gonna look different? A little, not by much. Alright. So, we're booted. So if we click on other user here, we'll see sign into in our domain. So we're gonna sign into we're gonna sign into our YouTube domain with administrator. Oops. Yep, and there we go. You're signing in the admin account? Signing in as the domain admin. All right. We don't have any other users set up, so this is the only account we can sign into. So we can create more users on the domain if you want. Yes, we'll do that in a later video. All right. So as we'll see, this is loaded. And if we go to 
a power shell, we will see. If we type in who am I? We are our domain administrator. Yep, meaning that you have admin perms. We have admin perms, and we're using our domain user. But obviously, in the later video, we will create more users. Yes, we is that, will. Is that it for this video? I would say yes. Alright guys, so that's how you set up an Active Directory domain. We haven't configured it and did all the stuff to it, but we just set it up. But there's obviously more setting up to do. We just created it in this video. So that is how you create an Active Directory domain before, you know, setting it up after creating it, because we'll set it up in a later video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Say bye. Bye!